So I'm old enough to remember Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, and I was six years old when I when I when he when he did that, and I and that really caught my attention, and uh, and I wanted to, that's when it that set the seeds in my head uh, that I wanted to grow up to be an astronaut. You know, just seeing that on the TV screen was you know really caught my attention. But it, uh, you know, when I went to high school, elementary school, and high school in the '70s. I, you know, I was I maybe a typical high school student. Uh, I, I had no idea. You know, I knew I liked math and science, so I wanted to study. And when I looked at the courses you had to take when you got to college for different majors, uh, I, I wanted to be an engineer. So I, I was lucky enough to get into Columbia. And I, I think I was just so, you know, in high school, I just was having fun and trying to do well in school and trying to get to a good college. And when I got here to Columbia, I was just trying to get successfully through the school uh, and didn't really think too much about what I was going to do uh, afterwards until I got to be a senior. And then when I was a senior, a movie called The Right Stuff came out. That movie kind of rekindled my, uh, my interest. It, it had me thinking. And uh, what got me was the views out of John Glenn's spaceship and, and also the camaraderie between those astronauts. Um, you know what they were doing doing something that I thought was really important and really cool and looked like a lot of fun and I had no idea how it could become it I was here as a, I was in New York I didn't like heights or you know I, I still don't like heights quite frankly but you know I'd, I'd never been on an airplane or maybe I've been on an airplane once at that point when I was a senior but you know I hadn't I wasn't a military person I wasn't very outdoorsy or a thrill seeker you know I grew up in New York you know the the subway was the most exciting thing I did so uh, I wasn't sure how you know what the what the deal was, but I started looking into it. I, I uh, applied to grad schools and looked for jobs when I got out of uh, when I was a senior. I, I took a job and I deferred grad school, and that was good for me because it gave me a, a time to think about what I really wanted to do. And I just could not get this idea of a space program out of my head, uh, and I didn't know if you know the astronaut thing. I found out was like really competitive and near impossible, but uh, I thought I could do something for NASA. So I went to grad school with the intent of pursuing the, a career with the space program and, and an application into the astronaut office, and and that's what I did. And so when I was at, in grad school, after a few years, I started applying. It took me four tries, uh, but finally uh, I, I was uh, was accepted to NASA on my on my fourth try, and that was 17 years ago, and it's been a fun ride ever since. So now what I'm what I'm doing is I'm on loan from from NASA here at Columbia uh, until until May for the academic year. And my goal, what I'm trying to do, is try to instill a little bit of the space program and uh, space engineering uh, into the curriculum and into the consciousness here at Columbia and in, and in New York City. So the course I'm going to be teaching is Introduction to Human Spaceflight. And uh, what, I, what I want to do is bring the, the um, the stuff that I've found interesting and the things that I've learned in the 17 years that I've had with NASA as an astronaut and bring that to the classroom. So I, I want to concentrate on people in space, uh, what you have to do to prepare, what you look, how are astronauts selected, how are they trained, and what it's like to be in space, the experience, and what, you, what some of the things you need to worry about to keep a crew healthy. So how do you get power to the spaceship? How do you keep the crew alive with uh, life support? Um, and how you make decisions. You make decisions on your power is going to affect how you're going to produce water, for example. One of the other things I want to include in my, in my course is it's not just NASA doing things now. It's also uh, the, the private commercial companies trying to put people into space. NASA is working with some of them directly to help put astronauts on the space station in low Earth orbit. But there's also some private companies like Virgin Galactic who are flying tourists. Uh, SpaceX, for example, is one of the companies that NASA is working with. Um, and, uh, that to, uh, SpaceX, Sierra Nevada, and Boeing, there are three companies that NASA is working with to provide service of uh, getting people to the space station. And what I've noticed in the students that I've met that are interested in the space program, they're not just interested in working for NASA. They're interested in also maybe working for one of these companies. So I think the future is pretty bright. I, I think it's not just NASA anymore that you can find uh, or NASA related projects to, to work on when you when you graduate but I think it's opening up the, the space the opportunity to be in space and to work in the space program uh, to a lot more people and I, I really hope that that commercial space flight takes off because I think that's where our future is I think NASA needs to concentrate on going beyond 
low Earth orbit getting back to the moon or going beyond our little neighborhood here. So we're looking for research opportunities, way, ways in which uh, Columbia faculty can uh, collaborate with NASA, uh, maybe do some experiments on the space station, see what research they're doing here that applies to what NASA is doing. So we're trying to set up some research partnerships. My most recent mission four years ago, they made an IMAX uh, movie, Hubble 3D. And it was also a Warner Brothers movie, just like this Gravity movie. Is, and, I, and, and the director uh, has said that he studied the IMAX movie. As far as the, the, the Hubble Space Telescope, the way it looks, every piece of it, label, screw, bolt, is all in place. And the payload bay of the space shuttle, which we used for that mission, is exactly the same. They have all the different uh, equipment carriers. We brought equipment up, we took stuff back. So you have like these big boxes of things in different, very unique positions and shapes. And they're there, so it's exact. It's an exact replica of what we had in in space for real. And if they actually did, um, you know, just scenes of our spacewalks and what we really do in space, no one can watch that. Even I have trouble watching it when my friends are doing it, you know. And so it's not a very exciting thing to watch. And, and they want people to watch a movie. So they have to make it interesting. And so they took some liberties with the story of how the you know, how you would solve these problems, but I, I, it's, a, it's a movie. And I remember when I was assigned to my first space flight, I was going to be a spacewalker, but I was assigned with the other three spacewalkers on that flight were really experienced spacewalkers and astronauts. They had been on multiple flights, and I was on my first, first flight, and it was my first opportunity to spacewalk as well. And I remember our very first little meeting we had with our, just the four of us, uh, the most senior guy, who was kind of like our, our leader, John Grunsfeld, said, well, we're going to make sure that we are really careful of what we're doing. We're going to be good to our equipment. We're going to make sure that when we put, because we, you know, the other guys dress the other guys and get them ready to go spacewalk. We put each other in our suits. We're going to be really careful about that. We're going to double and triple check everything. So we don't have any leaks. We're going to be very methodical. And when we're outside, we're going to take care of each other, both inside and outside, because everybody's coming home. And that's what, that, you know, that was kind of set the tone for me that, you know, this can be very dangerous. This is a lot of fun. It's a great opportunity but it's also pretty dangerous. So you try to prepare for whatever you can to meet those hazards that you might, might encounter. The astronaut thing's kind of interesting because it's, it's obvious not the smartest guy in the class that gets picked, but a lot of it is more of um, you know, teamwork, ability to get along with people. Um, you know, there are things that aren't necessarily uh, obvious. Uh, there's a lot of people at MIT that applied that were much smarter than I was, but uh, you know, I, th I think they're looking for someone you want to hang out with in space as a, that is, you know, the person is going to have the highest uh, IQ.